Hey folks, welcome to Resolving Post. In this video, we're going to talk about speed ramps, or more specifically, how we can use the read time controls and read time curves to create variable speed effects in WG Resolve. So something like this is what we will try to create in this video, just by playing around with the speed of the clip at different points of the clip to make this pretty cinematic looking drone footage. Now, to add speed variable effects to your clips, or in other words, add speed ramps, we will be using the read time controls and to access read time control, you right click on the clip, go to read time control or use the keyboard shortcut control R. And this is what you should see. And real quickly, if you want to change the speed of the entire clip, you can click on this drop down arrow over here next to the percentage sign and then click on change speed and select one of the available presets. Let's run that through and see how it looks. No surprise here, it does run at 100% speed. Now let's go ahead and press Ctrl Z to undo our changes. And then another way to change the speed of your clip is by dragging on the edges of your clip headers. But just make sure before you click and drag that your mouse is in fact on the header of the clip, which is indicated by the cursor when it looks like a double arrow rather than a double bracket like this. And then we drag to the left to speed up the clip. We do have more control when we are adjusting the speed of our clip with this method compared to using one of the presets, which only allow you to go up to 800% speed. So with this method, as you can see, we can go much faster than 800% speed, but this is not what we want. So let's go ahead and press Ctrl Z to undo. What we want to do is add multiple speed points across our clip. So I'm going to scrub through my timeline and go to the position where I want to add my speed point. And right over here is where I want to add my speed point. Click on the drop down next to the percentage. Click add speed point. This is the point where I want the speed transition to take place. And I want this portion here to last about two seconds. So I'm going to scrub my playhead about two seconds down the timeline, right about here. And then I'll add another speed point so I can speed things back up. And again, to add a speed point, we click on the arrow next to the percentage and then select add speed point. Okay, very good. So we're going to repeat this process a couple more times. So scrubbing through. And here looks like a pretty good place to add another speed point. Again, click on the drop down arrow next to the percentage sign. Click on add speed point. And similar to what we did before, we want this section here to last for about two seconds. So we're going to scrub our playhead two seconds to the right of the timeline. And then we'll add another speed point here so we can speed things back up. So let's repeat this process one more time. Let's scrub through our timeline and find one more point that we want to highlight right over here. So let's add a speed point right here and then scrub about two seconds to the right of the timeline, add another speed point so we can speed things back up right here. And we're done. Well, not exactly. I mean, we're done with adding the speed points, but uh, nothing's changed so far because we haven't yet sped up or slowed down any of the clips. So we'll get to that right now. And as mentioned before, we can change the speed of the clip by using one of the preset settings, but in this case, 100% is not going to be fast enough. So instead, we'll need to adjust the speed of this clip manually, and we can do that by dragging on the speed points that we created earlier. On the speed points itself, you have two handles, the upper handle and the bottom handle, where dragging on the upper handle either to the left or to the right will affect the speed of the clip, and then dragging the bottom handle to the left or to the right will change the position of the speed point. Now, what we want to do with our video is to speed the beginning portion of our clip to about 1500%. So let's go ahead and drag the upper handle of our speed point to the left. And if the percentage disappears, just zoom in closer to your timeline like this. That seems about right. Let's just play this back and see how it looks. Okay, that might be a little too fast. So let's kind of slow things down to around 1400, give or take. Yes, much better. And this is what we're trying to achieve. We want the clip to slow down right over here at the first speed point. And then around the second speed point, we want the clip to speed back up. And to do that, we just need to kind of repeat the same steps that we did earlier to the first speed point. But this time we'll apply speed changes to this speed point right over here. So again, we drag the upper handle to the left until we get around 1400% speed. Um, zoom into the timeline if necessary. Let's slide this to the left just a little bit more, and that's, that's about right. Now let's play this back and see how it looks. Okay, that might be a little too fast, so let's slide this to the right just a little bit. 
um, <laughs> now a little too slow. Sorry, compulsive disorder. Slide this a tad bit to the left, and all right, all right, that's it. I promise, no more, no more adjustments. <laughs> okay, that's perfect anyway. So good, I'm happy. And we'll apply the same thing to the next speed point. So we'll drag the upper handle here to the left. Okay, let's play this back and see how it looks. Looking good, looking good. And then lastly, we want to speed up the outgoing portion of this clip. Since there are no more speed points, in order to adjust the speed of this portion of the clip, we instead drag the header of the clip to the left like this. Okay, good, that feels about right. Now let's press Shift Z to zoom to fit to our timeline. And now let's just play through our whole clip and see how it turned out. Okay, good. Mm-hmm. Looking good, looking good. All right, all right. This is uh, so much better than it was originally. It's looking pretty good so far, but I think I do want to make just a couple minor uh, changes here. I think th this portion here is lingering a little bit too long for my liking. So what we want to do is change the position of the speed point. As mentioned earlier, we drag the bottom handle of a speed point, not the upper handle. And so let's click and drag this a little to the left and play this back, see how it looks. All right, still a little too long, I think. Let's just drag this to the left a little bit more. Play this back once more. Perfect. All right, so we'll just keep it as is. But with that said, we're still not done yet, so please bear with me, folks. What we want to do next is to refine our speed points so that the transition between speeds is more gradual and, and less abrupt. Kind of what you see here in this portion of the clip where the speed of the clip is transitioning from 1400% to 100%. And because we're not using any sort of speed curves, so the transition is very rough, but that's not what we want. We want to smoothen things out. And in order to do so, we have to use retime curve. And you can access retime curve by right clicking on your clip and select retime curve. Next, click on the curve dropdown located on the top left corner. You want to make sure that retime speed is enabled. So let's go ahead and tick retime speed and then disable retime frame since we won't be using this one. And if your retime speed isn't activated yet, go ahead and click on this red line here to activate it like so. And now we just need to readjust our view of this curve. Currently the value is set to 300% as indicated in the top left corner, but because we know for sure that the speed of our clip goes up to 1400, 1500%, what we can do is click and drag to the right to broaden the range of what we can see on our speed curve. And just in case you're not very familiar with what you're looking at right now, let me explain here what we have in front of us. So these control points here are the speed points that we created earlier. And we can drag these control points here to the left or to the right to reposition our speed points and our clips. And this is very similar to what we did earlier when we dragged the bottom handle of our speed point to the left or to the right. And then next we have these horizontal lines here that represent the value or the speed of our clip. And we can drag these lines up or down where dragging downwards will reduce the speed of our clip and dragging upwards will increase it. And this method is equivalent to dragging the upper handle of your speed point as we have done so earlier to adjust the speed of our clips. Okay, so back to smoothening out our speed transitions. What we want to do is convert these control points into speed curves. So let's go ahead and select this control point first. And then next, click on this curve icon right up here. All right. And once clicked, base your handles appear out of the control point to which you can drag these handles to the left or to the right to adjust the slope of the speed curve. In our case, we don't want a very steep slope. So we're going to drag these base your handles outwards to have a more gradual transition of speed. And then let's play this back real quick to see how it looks. Very nice, very nice, much smoother as you can tell. It's not abrupt at all, it's very gradual, very smooth, very uh, creamy. And so now we wanna apply the same process that we did to all of the other control points to give it that same kind of look. Stretch the base your handle to your liking. Um, play that back real quick. Let's make this one a little steeper. And then the same thing on the next control point. Click the curve icon, start to base your handles, and so forth. And the same to all of the other control points that follow, like so.
click on the icon, stretch the bezier handles out just a tad. And there we have it. All right, so all we have to do now is just play back our clip and see how it looks. You'll notice that it looks so much smoother than it originally was, a lot more cinematic, and it just goes to show you how small adjustments and fine tuning like this one does go a long way with adding a lot more value to a production, making your videos look looking a lot more cinematic. All right, hope you found this video insightful. If so, please leave a thumbs up. And for more videos like this, do subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, do leave them down below and I'll try to get back to you guys as soon as I can. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.